Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made this serving board using polymer clay with resin on top to seal it. It is possible to put polymer clay onto wood and bake it all together in the oven. However, it's not foolproof. It does need some practice to get the temperatures right so that your board doesn't crack. So because I haven't quite got that idea perfected yet, I'm not showing you that way today. That might be a future video. Today, I'm going to be showing you the safe way where there'll be no cracking of wooden boards. You'll also be learning a really lovely technique to use with polymer clay, which involves fresh flowers or dried flowers imprinted into the clay. And the effects are just absolutely beautiful and it is so easy. So sit back and enjoy the video. For my serving board I've decided to use white polymer clay and I've already conditioned it before I started filming because it can be quite a lengthy process to make sure it's nice. You just need to make it good and pliable and if it's crumbly you need to give it a good rolling, uh, kneading or put it through your pasta machine a few times to make it good and soft. I've done all that and I've put it through my pasta machine at the thickest setting which is at about two millimetres. And I folded it over so it's now four millimeters thick. And I'm just using my ruler here to just make a mark on it so that I can see it's a straight line. Because the tissue blade that I'm using here is a little bit bendy. And you can't always be certain that you're getting a straight line. So I like to mark it first with something like a ruler that's not going to be so bendy. And then I'm just cutting it. I'm just holding the serving board next to it to check I've got a big enough piece of clay and to see where I want to cut and measuring and marking so I make sure it's exactly the same um, size at both sides of my, you know what I mean, I can't think of the words and doing the same thing again. I've got it on greaseproof paper just because it tends to stick to the, your work surface if you're not careful and it's quite annoying so I like to use greaseproof paper to put my clay onto while I'm working with it. And while you're just watching this bit I'm just going to let you know that this serving board that I'm making today I'm actually going to be giving it to one of my subscribers. So if you've subscribed and you're watching this now um, stay tuned till the end and find out how you could get your hands on this serving board. That's if you like it. Okay, so my panel of clay is all cut out and I'm just placing it gently on top of the serving board and I'm going to make sure it fits perfectly and I'm going to trim the edges and make sure it's just right and it will be coming off again so I'm not going to press it down too firmly just firmly enough for it to stay in position while I do the next bit. The smoothing tool that you see me using here is a really handy tool I had it in my cake making things and it's really designed to be used with fondant when you're making cakes because I do love making cakes so I've got lots of cake making things and it works absolutely fantastically for pressing down on the polymer clay. So what I'll do is I'll put a link to that in the description in case you fancy getting one for yourself. Everything you see me use today will be in the links in the description. I've just put into place a sprig of rosemary and pressed it down with that smoothing tool I was telling you about. And now I'm just using my tweezers to take it out again. I've pressed it down nice and firmly so I've get, got a good imprint and what I'm going to do is turn it over and use exactly the same piece again because I kind of like symmetry. Um, you don't have to use the same piece but I like it to be the same on both sides. So yeah, I'm, I've used the same thing again. I'm going to repeat the process. I'm really sorry that you keep seeing my head <laughs> but not a lot can do about that. I would have combed my hair a bit better if I'd realised my head was in shot. <laughs> I 
Now, in a moment, you're going to be finding out why I narrate my videos. It just works out so much better for me <laughs> if I'm not interrupted, because I do get interrupted. And yeah, you're going to find out why I narrate my videos. Uh, I decided to leave it in. I, I was interrupted by my granddaughter and um, she's so cute. She's only two. She was so cute. I thought I've got to leave that in the video. So I'm going to put the audio from when I actually filmed it back on in a moment. And while you're listening to my cute granddaughter, I'll show you some of the fantastic comments I got on one of my most recent videos because I'm so grateful to you all. Mama, I need to wash my hands. Okay, what will be a minute, darling. What are you doing, Minnie? I'm jumping. Oh, you're jumping. Okay. It's falling out. What's falling out? This is falling out too. And the sound's falling That's all that jumping. I can in a minute, darling. I, like I said, I'm just a bit busy at the moment. Just w hold on. You can see Bubba there. He did it. Oh, it's only come along as well. Come along, come along, come along, me. Eh, eh, eh. I'm going to go and see Grandma. I'm here. <laughs> what do you mean you're going to go and see Grandma? Granddad. <laughs> Granddad's at work, darling. Okay, so I'm back. I hope you didn't mind that little um, interlude. I just had to just leave it in. <laughs> I hope you understood everything that you were seeing without any narration. What you've just seen me doing now is just using that tissue blade to take the clay off again because soon it's going to be getting baked in the oven. But what I'm going to do next is I'm going to be showing you how I colour the clay before it goes in the oven. So because I use uh, resin an awful lot, I've got lots and lots of different mica powders and this is what I'm using to colour the clay. It's really, it's quite enjoyable to do, to be honest with you. I've got a big soft brush. I'm just brushing it on and blending it in. It's spring green, uh, Pearl X spring green that I'm using there. And I'm just adding more and more until I, I'm happy with it. And yeah, that's all I'm doing really. I have seen people do it with chalk pastels, just using a blade to kind of scrape um, scrape it into a powder onto the clay and then doing the same kind of thing. But I, I've got lots of mica powders, so I use that. You've just seen, um, I found a little bit of dirt in the... <laughs> in the clay and made a right mess getting it out but don't worry nothing's it 
nothing's permanent with Colin McClare. There's always a way out of it. And in the end, you won't see it because I had a plan up my sleeve. Now I'm using Pearl X Antique Copper and blending that in. It's quite deceptive, the angle that you can see this from. When you when I pick it up and move it in a little while, you'll see how it actually looks completely different from a different angle. Uh, you could just keep working away at it until you're happy. Any colours you like will look lovely. So I really wasn't happy with that little bit where I'd gone wrong, where I'd used my knife to get a piece of dirt out and then made a big hole in it. Well, I just couldn't quite get it right. So what I'm doing here is I've, I'm adding two thistles. Well, one thistle is the same one. No, it wasn't. Sorry, I'm just looking. I didn't use the same one twice like before. Two different thistles and I've put them on, pressing them down again, just like before. And I'm going to go through the same process again, colouring those. I did actually uh, use a lavender pigment powder to colour the thistles. and But um, you can disregard that really because at the end you won't see the colour. I, I ended up going with something, something completely different. But I've kept it in to show you that, you know, we all... We all make mistakes, do things, find out we don't like them. And there's, it's good to see how we can get around it and change it and it still end up looking great. I wasn't really happy with the lavender. It just didn't look right to me. So here we go. I've baked it in the oven and according to the cooking times on my Sculpey clay packet. And what I've done is I've got some black acrylic paint and diluted it. So it's more of a wash and I'm just brushing it over and wiping it off. I found that at first it was just too watery and it wasn't giving the effect that I wanted it to have. It just wasn't darkening the leaves enough. So I just kept adding a little bit more paint into the solution until I was happy with it. And in the end, there you can see we've got the baked clay with the black in the imprint. And now it's time to attach it to the serving board. And all I'm using is regular PVA glue. I'm putting plenty on. I'm going to spread it around and simply stick it on. Now, I don't know if you can tell, you, you can maybe see, but it's uh, when you put the polymer clay in the oven, it does actually shrink a little bit. So you can see there's a little bit of an edge of my board showing that with to me, that's absolutely fine. It doesn't bother me, but I did, did once point it out to you. It does shrink a little bit. So I'm just using a baby wipe to wipe away the excess glue and I'm going to leave it a good few hours to make sure it's completely dry before I do the next step. If you've watched my videos before, you will know that I'm always looking to try out new things. And as usual, I'm trying something completely new on this video. New for me anyway, I'm sure someone else somewhere has done it. I've decided to use some suede string. It's like, um, it's what you buy for making your own jewellery, for making necklaces. It's just like a brown suede. And I'm sticking it on the edge to just finish it off a bit. I could have just used uh, some pen, gold. Uh, what's the what? Can't think of the name of the pen. I'll put it up on the screen. I could have just used some gold pen or black pen or any colour pen, but I just wanted to try something different. So I'm using the suede string and I'm, I've glued the string and I'm also gluing the clay and I'm going to stick it into position. 
And then when I've done that and it's all dried, I'm going to put the resin over the top so it will protect the suede and it will, the, the board will be cleanable, you know, it, it will be waterproof so it won't be a problem. So like I said, it was my first time at using this suede as an edging strip. And you know what? I really, really do like the finished effect with it on. It it really adds an extra something to it. It's just, I don't know, maybe, maybe you can put words to it. It just looks more, mm, more finished. <laughs> yeah, I really like that. Right, so if you've watched my videos before and you're used to watching my videos, you will know that in almost every video, at some point, I managed to forget to press record. And so I've done that again, as always. What you've missed is me actually just pouring on the resin and masking this. So. What I'll do now is I'll talk you through what I did and what you missed because it's not much really. All you missed me do, the next bit I did was I snipped off the ends of the suede cord thing and I completely covered the, back, the end of the back with my aluminium tape and I masked it here as well. And then I poured on the resin, which was total cast two-part epoxy resin. And one thing I will need to tell you what I did. I wanted to keep it, instead of keeping it flat like this, I wanted to tilt it a little bit so that the resin would run that way. I didn't want it pooling down here. I wanted it to keep going that way. So underneath my board I had two cups there and just one cup there and basically put it down and let the resin flow that way. And that way I avoided it going too much down here. Sometimes it seeps under the tape if you're not careful and you find that it's kind of gone into the grain of the wood underneath the tape. So fingers crossed when I take the... Um, Masking tape off now, it will be fine. I'm hoping this is in focus. Can't see it very well. Anyway, let's have a look. Let's take this masking tape off. What I sometimes do, let's see how I've just cut my nail so I can't start it off. What I sometimes do is um, I get my hair dryer and it helps to soften the glue if I just warm it up a bit, and I think I will. still come underneath. Even though I tipped it up, it still leaks a little bit underneath. <sighs> but that's okay. All you need to do is get a little bit of sandpaper and rub it away. Sometimes you just, whatever you try, you can't avoid it. What I normally do is if I'm doing a piece where I'm priming it first, I put the tape on then do a layer of paint over the tape and onto the board and then put my resin on and that stops the resin seeping underneath the tape but because I've done it differently this time I couldn't do that because I wasn't priming the board so I'll just have to get my nail file, my emery board and just rub that off and it'll be fine, I'll show you it in a moment Right, so I'm back and I've sanded away the little bits that came underneath the tape and it's a lot better now. And I've also just added a cord for it so it can be hung up and I've put a charm on the end and this charm is kind of a similar process uh, but it's the opposite way around, it's a, what would you call it, a positive 
um, casting of a thistle instead of the negative where it's imprinting in. It's a 3D one and it's done in Plaster of Paris and that's going to be my next tutorial. So look out for the next tutorial where I'm going to be casting thistles in Plaster of Paris and making beautiful things. So yeah, here's my finished result. Polymer clay on wood and I think it's turned out quite nice. And I'll show you some others that I've done using the same process but with different um, foliage. So here I've used a Savoy cabbage leaf on this one. It does look really lovely but it's a much more subtle effect because there's no black in there for the to show make the lines show up. But I really do like the effect using the cabbage leaves. And with this one I've used sage leaves. I really love the the detail you get from the sage leaves. They just look so pretty. Almost like those skeleton leaves that you can buy. And here's another one with a Savoy cabbage leaf and this time I used the black in the lines like before and you can see what a completely different effect you get. You may have seen my recent video where I used bubbles to create a beautiful effect in UV resin. That video was so popular and got so many subscribers that my subscriber count has actually gone well over a thousand and I'm so pleased with that that I'm celebrating by giving this board away to one of you lovely viewers. All you need to do is give this video the thumbs up and make sure you subscribe please. But the main thing to help my channel to grow is if you could please share the video on your social media. It could be Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, it could be a blog, anywhere you like but just so that I can go and have a look at your social media as well and to see why you've shared it please could you leave a link to your social media wherever you've shared it in the comments please and I will go and have a look the winner will be announced on the 1st of February and I will contact you directly and let you know and get your address and get your board posted out so that's it for today I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have any other ideas or suggestions for future videos, please let me know in the comments and check out my other videos if you liked 